Good morning, students. Welcome to Grade Nine Matriculation Stream. Today, we are going to start with the Chapter One of Chemistry, that is, Introduction to Chemistry. Now, first of all, what is chemistry? Chemistry is the study of structure, function, and properties of matter, and the changes it undergoes. Also, chemistry deals with the principles and certain laws by which the matter shows the changes, or by which the matter undergoes and attain a particular change. And you all know that what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and that occupies the space. Now, what are certain branches of chemistry? Because chemistry is a vast field, and there are various branches of chemistry. Applications of chemistry are much like science itself. Chemistry is an extremely practical science, and has a deep influence on our body and our daily life. So, in order to understand all the aspects of chemistry, there are certain branches of chemistry which deals with particular area to study about the chemistry. And these branches are physical chemistry, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, analytical chemistry, biochemistry, industrial and applied chemistry. Nuclear chemistry, environmental chemistry, polymeric chemistry. Now, what is physical chemistry? It is a branch of chemistry that deals with the laws and the principles. The laws and the principles which are applied, or you know, which tells us about the combination of the atoms and molecules in chemical reactions. And you know the smallest particle of the matter is atom, and when atom combines, they make molecules, and so many molecules combine to form compounds or mixtures. So in physical chemistry, we study about the uh, linkages or the arrangements or the combinations of atoms and molecules in different chemical reactions. What is a chemical reaction? Basically, any change, any change when we study any change, any change occur in the matter shows a chemical reaction. Now, next, organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is a branch of chemistry that deals with the carbon compounds, like. Chemistry of hydrocarbons and most of the products which you eat and which we consume are organic in nature. So study about those compounds for the benefit of the human or the mankind. We study them under organic chemistry, but in organic chemistry we do not deal with certain uh, carbon compounds and those carbon compounds are carbon dioxide. We do not study carbon dioxide in, in carbon organic chemistry, carbon monoxide, metal carbonates, bicarbonates, and carbides. We do not study these carbon compounds in organic chemistry, but except these, all other carbon compounds falls into the category of organic chemistry. Now, in organic chemistry, it is a branch of chemistry that deals with the chemistry of elements and their compounds. And it deals with the non-living organisms, mostly in minerals. Mineral nutrition we study uh, in our, our in organic chemistry. In organic chemistry, we study about the nutritive inorganic ions. Uh, for example, the plants use raw material for the photosynthesis is inorganic in nature and we study that in inorganic chemistry. 
Next is analytical chemistry. It is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of methods and techniques involved uh, uh, involved to check or to determine the kind, quality, and quantity of various uh, components in a given substance. For example, you know a solution is composed of solute and solvent. So to check, to analyze, or to measure the quantity of solute and the solvent in a solution falls into the category of analytical chemistry. Now biochemistry. It is a branch of chemistry that deals with the compounds of living organisms, for example, plants and animals and their metabolism in the living body. Industrial chemistry or applied chemistry. It is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of different chemical processes, for example, the making up of glass, cement, paper, fertilizers, certain medicines, they all involve chemical processes and we study these chemical processes in industrial or applied chemistry. Nuclear chemistry, it is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of changes occurring in the nuclei of atom. If you know the structure of the atom, in the center of the atom there is present a nucleus which is holding the shells of the atom towards itself and around the nucleus there are shells or orbits and in each orbit certain electrons are present and inside the nucleus neutrons and protons are present outside the nucleus in the orbits electrons are present so this is the basic structure of the atom so in nuclear chemistry we study or we deal with the nuclei of the atom and these nuclei carry on emitted some rays so at what speed the rays are emitted by the nuclei of the atom or what are the wavelength of the rays etc etc can be studied in the nuclear chemistry. Environmental chemistry, it is a branch of chemistry that deals with the study of the interaction of chemical materials and their effect on the mankind or the living beings. Personal hygiene, pollution and health hazard are important areas of environmental chemistry. Environmental chemistry deals with the in the presence of certain chemicals in a particular area or the industry releasing the byproducts, discharging the byproducts must not be near some residential area. The byproducts of the industries which are uh, toxic or dangerous to the marine life should not be thrown into the oceans, etc. etc. are dealt in the environmental chemistry. Now polymeric chemistry, it is a branch of chemistry that deals especially with the study of polymerization. Polymerization is basically the making up of chains, long chains and uh, what is what it is mean in the chemistry that making up of long, long chains is basically to combine a lot of chemical reactions or atoms or molecules to form a single compound. This is polymerization and the products obtained through this process are plastics, fibers, papers. So polymeric chemistry deals with the polymerization processes. And uh, in the end I would like to say that every branch of chemistry has its own importance in human life. Biochemistry is the backbone of medical sciences. If we talk about environmental chemistry, it tells us about the environmental composition and how one can protect its environment from environmental hazards. What are the environmental ha hazards? Environmental hazards are basically um, pollution or uh, you know, global warming. These are environmental problems. So in, in environmental chemistry, we, de we deal or we um, 
understand that how we can save ourselves. And if we say about industrial chemistry, it helps in the manufacture of the industrial products and their uses. Certain acids and bases are very important for us. Detergents are important. Soaps are important. So in the industries, chemistry help us to um, produce or to manufacture certain substances in a safe manner. Analytical chemistry is important to understand the composition of compounds, quality of the products, and the diagnosis or analysis of certain biological samples, for example, water, the um, food quality, the nutrients quality, milk, blood, soil, and the use of research techniques. We can also study research techniques in analytical chemistry, for example, chromatography and spectroscopy. And if we say that what is the importance of nuclear chemistry, the nuclear chemistry provides us radioisotopes for the treatment of many diseases because radioisotopes are used to treat cancer. And uh, nuclear chemistry also involved or radio technology also involved in the X-rays, etc. So uh, these were the branches of chemistry and uh, the importance or application of certain branches in our daily life. <laughs> so um, here I would like to eliminate few important facts about the chemistry. That is, without chemistry it would be extremely hard for us to live. We need chemistry and chemicals for everything we do. When we eat food, chemicals are the main source in which help us to decompose the food. Decompose the food. Do you get the point? When we eat food, the food enters in our body and the digestion starts. For digestion, certain chemicals releases in the body which are known as enzymes and uh, HCL as you know is present in the stomach that is also a chemical that helps in digestion so we can say that chemistry is everywhere our organs are protected by harmful acids with a layer of chemicals in the form of mucus yes mucus is the layer which is protecting each and every organ of your body and that mucus is made up of certain atoms and molecules. Without it, our organs will slowly dissolve away. But chemicals and chemistry may also harm us, such as the acids we find in our stomachs, sometimes cause acidity. And some acids are corrosive to the skin. So the people are working in chemical industries must use masks, gloves and spectacles to protect themselves from chemical hazards. Now what are the impacts of chemistry on the climate or the environment? Ever wonder how certain organisms were able to live under those extreme climates and temperatures? Depths of sea, scalding waters and the unbearable cold of the Arctic. It's because their biology is able to use the use of chemicals to thrive in such places. If an organism is, is living in such a place where um, the concept of life is not possible, it means that the animal or the organism has adopted to that environment by certain changes in the chemical behavior of the body. The microbe group called Archaea is able to live in such harsh conditions because of the use of enzyme called extremo enzymes. These extremo enzymes coat and protect the microbes from extreme temperatures. Due to this, it allows the membranes to function more effectively. And the extremo enzymes, enzymes are basically protein in nature and proteins are made up of Amino acids. Amino acids or amino acids are made up of nitrogen, hydrogen, 
the nitrogen and hydrogen are the atoms or the elements we study in the branch biochemistry that how biology the science of living is related with the chemistry thank you so very much this is all about uh, today's lecture in the next class we will study further and i would like you all to please study your textbook and start learning from your textbook and uh, please try to cover up your course with this e learning process so that we won't be lacking any time for our course completion thank you so much